Temple football ends its spring season with a showcase in front of the fans. I'm Al Sports Update's Kayla Levine, live from Edberg Olsen Hall, with more of this annual event from this past spring. I'm Brielle Batchelor. I will introduce you to Temple's first sports dietitian and her work in creating a nutrition organization on campus. I'm Nate Wilkie. Later, I'll be talking about Elsa Chan cementing her name in Temple's track and field record book. And on the anchor desk in TV3, we are finally at the finish line. It's this crew's last show of the semester, and it's a packed one. From lacrosse to baseball to equestrian. We've got it all coming right up. Our sports update is live, and it starts right, right now. now. afternoon and I can't believe I'm saying this but welcome to this crew's final edition of Al Sports Update. I'm Natalie Coranda and I'm Patty Heckard. Although this may be our last show together there's still plenty to cover starting with the annual cherry and white game. On Saturday, we got a small preview of the Temple football season later in the fall. The annual Cherry and White game took place and it gave family, friends, and fans a look at what's to come. So we have a play breakdown. On this first play here, Patrick Keller, under center, finds Zay Baines on the wide receiver screen, gets past a few, tries to spin out of the tackle, but is pulled down for the 10 yard gain. Now next, Forrest Brock under center. EJ Wilson gets the handoff and breaks away for a 13-yard rush. Wilson finished the game with 29 rushing yards. Now here, Tyler Douglas had 10 rushes on the day, so sells this option really well. Leaves a ton of open space for redshirt freshman Kyle Williams to run up the middle for the 21-yard gain. And now going back to Brock, he's under center, drops back in the pocket. He's looking for Preston Everhart deep, but Jalen Lewis gets in in front of the interception. And the defense comes out on top in the end. The final score, which doesn't mean much in the grand scheme of things, 56 white team, 41 cherry team. Stan Drayton hasn't settled on a number one quarterback, but junior Forrest Brock had the most snaps on Saturday. Junior Evan Simon follows as he completed six of 14 passing attempts. Redshirt freshman Pat Keller finished with three of six and redshirt freshman Tyler Douglas completed two passes in the cherry and white scrimmage. Number one. Um, I thought our players really had a, a really good approach to the spring season right off the jump from day one. And this started back in December, quite honestly, just implementing a lot of guys into our program and, you know, making sure that at the front door of bringing some of our newcomers in, you know, uh, challenging them, making sure they understood what they were getting to. Uh, if they chose Temple, understanding what they represent. I feel like the D-line got better. Uh, we get to the quarterback way better. Uh, we've been working hard. As a whole, I feel like the defense got better. Offense got better too. The whole team got better. Um, picking up little things that we messed up on during the season and uh, fixing them now during the spring so we can be prepared for um, the next season that's coming up. Al Sports Update's Kayla Levine was at the annual game and is with us at Edberg Olsen Hall to tell us about the festivities on Saturday for fans and alumni. Hey, Kayla. Yes, Natalie, this event gives alumni, families, and students the ability to watch the Owls for the first time in months. Many spend this day reconnecting with past teammates and friends they may have not seen in months or even years. After a long off-season, Temple football closed out their year with its annual cherry and white spring game. This day marks an annual tradition that brings family, friends, alumni, and community members to watch the Owls showcase their off-season training that started six weeks ago. Every spring practice was closed to the public, so Saturday was the first time the public got to see Stan Drayton's crew since the fall finale in November. You know, I, I think there's such an attachment to, um, to, to your alma mater, and, and so, you know, there's nothing like nostalgia and being able to get back to campus and embrace, you know, uh, 
the place that gave so much to all of us is, is just is special. There is so much going on at the spring event that sometimes the game is actually secondary. From festivities to the music, community members are able to travel back to Temple to reconnect with friends and family while getting to watch Temple football play a full four-quarter game at its practice facility. It's such a great location um, to bring back um, all the alumni, um, the recruits that are coming out with their families. It's just showing more spirit, bringing back that football vibe. The Cherry and White game is a culmination of Temple football's year-long training that gives players the opportunity to showcase their skills in front of family, friends, and alumni. Many Temple alumni have the opportunity to bring their children and grandchildren to see the newest generation of Owls, hoping that the future will bring on new, positive memories when the real season starts in September. 24 schedule starts off its first two weeks with away games against Oklahoma and Navy. On September 14th, the Owls return home to Lincoln Financial Field to play Coastal Carolina, Utah State, and Army. As the Owls reach week seven, they will travel back and forth playing UConn, Tulsa, ECU, Tulane, FAU, UTCA, and end their regular season right back on home against North Texas on November 30th. Stan Drayton and his, and his crew are continuing to step in the right direction into the 2024 season with 43 new members added to the roster. Reporting from Edberg Olsen Hall, I'm Kayla Levine. Natalie and Patty, Patty, back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Kayla. It is, our, it is time for our first break of the show. When we return, we have the latest on lacrosse as the team's regular season is nearing an end. We'll be back in 90 seconds. Welcome back to Al Sports Update. There's a new man in town. On Thursday, the AAC announced its second ever conference commissioner, Tim Pernetti. Current AAC commissioner Mike Oresco is stepping down from the position to retire after 14 years on the job. Pernetti spoke about his plans for the future of the AAC last week as introductory news conference. So together, as a conference, as we're looking at the future, we're going to build on the foundation and the true mission and really the purity of collegiate athletics. We're going to elevate the enterprise, like get ready. We're going to take some big swings and we'll innovate and lead in the future. This conference has an opportunity to break new ground. We're going to be proactive, we're going to be disruptive, and we'll maximize every opportunity that's in front of us. Whether it be capitalizing on relationships in private equity, innovative naming rights, creative corporate partnerships, conference-wide NIL resources, maverick postseason models. We're gonna turn the conference room at the office into a literal shark tank of fun. Nothing will be off the table. So I'd like to wrap. Pernetti does not take the reins until June this year, but we have an idea what the new commissioner wants to accomplish with the AAC. He hopes to use the expanding college football playoff and NIL opportunities to attract recruits to the conference in the near future. A lot on the line for the lacrosse team on Saturday versus conference foe Cincinnati. The Bearcats start on top by scoring twice in the fifth minute of play, but the Owls don't wait long to come from behind. Maeve Tobin, as you'll see, rips one off an assist from Bell Master Pietro, and it's part of a seven point afternoon for Master Pietro, a season high. In the second period, Cincinnati has a three point lead, but Julia Schickling tosses one in and the Owls finally start to close the gap. They score three more goals for a one goal lead at the half. Mackenzie Roth receives a pass from Master Pietro and it's good. In the fourth, Temple still leads by four, but Cincinnati doesn't make it easy for the Owls. They score two in the first five minutes of the fourth, bringing the score to 11 to nine, but it's not enough for the win. Temple walks away with this one. The final score, 13 to nine. That performance against Cincinnati helped win two AAC weekly awards for Temple. Katie Shallow won her third Defensive Player of the Week award after tying a season high in draw controls with seven. Bell Master Pietro earned her third Midfielder of the Week honor, scoring seven points against Cincy. Temple has two more games before the start of the AAC Conference Tournament. The team will host its senior day in a non-conference game versus Ohio State. Then on the 27th, the Owls head to the University of Florida. A win against the Gators will give Temple a share of the AAC regular season title. 
On the track, there's a Temple transfer and a long-distance runner already breaking records in her first season with the Owls. Owl Sports Update's Nate Wilkie is in the studio to tell us more. Hey, Nate. Thanks, Patty. The outdoor track season is full swing, and long-distance runner Elsa Chan is off to a hot start. I got the chance to talk to her about breaking the program record for the 10,000 meter run. No matter the city or state, Elsa Chan is a record setter. The sophomore is setting records in her first year at Temple, and this comes after she transferred from Jackson State, where she broke the school's record for the outdoor 5K and 10K, as well as the indoor 5K. At the highly competitive rally relays on March 29th, she set a program record for the 10,000 meter, clocking in at 34 minutes and 43 seconds. It was just a lot of consistency. I honestly didn't expect it. It was always in the back of my mind, but I didn't think I, I could actually do it. And I thought that she could run 34, 45 um, if everything went perfect. And she ran 34, 43. To put it in perspective, 10,000 meters is about 32,808 feet, 6.2 miles, or 25 laps around this track. Both Elsa and Coach Immer brought their love for running from Australia to America and bonded quickly. Cross country is such a mental sport, so it's important for athletes to be comfortable finding themselves in the right headspace. And with Elsa, it's just been really great to see her just be comfortable with me because like, you know, I've really only been coaching her for a year now. And Chan isn't done with the Penn Relays and the AAC Championship just weeks away. The AAC Outdoor Track and Field Championships will be held May 10th to the 12th. Chan is only a sophomore, leaving plenty of time to break more records in her time at Temple. Reporting from the studio set, I'm Nate Wilkie. Patty and Natalie, back to you at the desk. We are up against another break, but stay in your seats. And if you're streaming us while in class, now's a good time to look up. Coming up, Al Sports Update's Brielle Bachelor is at the studio set to talk about new changes to Temple's varsity nutrition plan. Plus, we have one last edition of Who's on Our Radar. See you in just 90 seconds. Welcome back. It's that old saying, you are what you eat. So for Temple's top athletes, nutrition is a vital part of their everyday life. Al Sports Update's Brielle Bachelor is in the studio to tell us more about the school's new athletic nutrition program. Hey Brielle. The Sports Nutrition Lounge is not only a place for athletes to relax and get homework done, it's also a safe place to seek advice from the sports dietitian about nutritional goals. Temple Sports Nutrition is one of the newer behind-the-scenes organizations for D1 athletes on campus. It is led by Temple's first sports dietitian named Jacqueline Cotamaccio, and it started in January of 2023. I was able to really kind of build this program from scratch, which was an awesome opportunity for me. Jackie meets with several athletes each day across 19 College Gate teams, and with that comes several responsibilities. I'll do team talks, I'll do one-on-ones, we have the fueling station, so I'll really be like the overseer of the fueling station. And I'm on the second floor of Pierce McGonagall Hall in the Sports Nutrition Lounge, where athletes can grab a quick snack Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 p.m. Jackie's position is so involved that she has interns helping her keep up with the demand. So our main responsibility is stocking, so we make sure that the athletes are getting the right amount of fuel, the right amount of um, essential nutrients that they need as athletes. And I just want to be able to help fuel the athletes on the field and while they're just a student and in general a person when they leave this college campus. We've made that more of a consistent thing as of this last year and a half so that the students know they always have like a supplement throughout the day. The Sports Nutrition Lounge, along with the fueling station, have been useful resources for the athletes, with some even coming multiple times a day for reliable and healthy snacks, along with sound advice. Jackie and her three interns will continue to keep the athletes healthy and well-nourished with proper nutrition, which is not very easy considering the Owls have about 500 D1 athletes across those 19 sports. Reporting from the studio set, I'm Brielle Bachelor. Patty and Natalie, back to you guys at the desk. Joining us for our last edition of Who's On Our Radar is club baseball player Evan Williams. 
Earlier this month, Evan threw a no-hitter in a game against Loyola, Maryland. Today, he sits with us on the desk to talk about that game. Hey, Evan, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you guys for having me on. It's, it's really honor to be on your show. <laughs> of course. I mean, starting off, zero hits, two walks, and 16 strikeouts through nine innings against Loyola, Maryland. Take us through that game. Yeah, definitely. So, it was an awesome feeling, um, an awesome experience. It was one of those starts, uh, like a rare start, where you just feel in control of everything. Um, I felt in control of my whole arsenal of pitches. Um, I felt in control of myself on the mound, and I felt in control of the other team's lineup. Um, so it was a really cool experience to be able to do that and just get dialed in and um, really just kind of grind through the game. Um, and it was also really cool because it was an absolute shootout with the other team's pitcher. Um, he didn't give up any runs until the ninth inning either. So um, I just want to give a shout out to him too. It was a really cool experience. Now, Evan, this isn't your first time throwing a no-hitter. In fact, you threw a perfect game last year against Georgetown. How do the two compare in terms of career achievements? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say this one felt a lot more legitimate in my opinion. Um, it was really cool to throw a perfect game, but uh, we mercy ruled Georgetown in that game, so it was only through five innings. Um, so, you know, it was definitely on my bucket list to have some sort of achievement like this in a complete game. Um, so it was really cool to be able to go out there and literally throw my first nine inning complete game for the first time in my life. Um, it was awesome for it to be a no hitter. And um, I think one of the similarities was definitely that I could trust my whole field behind me. Um, and it's really important to have that as a pitcher to be able to just work the zone and know that if anything goes into play that your fielders are going to back you up and get it. So I'd say that was the, the biggest similarity there. And this season, Temple Club Baseball moved up from D2 to D1. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how the changing competition has been for the team so far? Yeah, definitely. So it's been a pretty smooth trans transition, I would say. Um, definitely more challenging. It's come with its challenges. Um, you know, last year we started off pretty slow and then kind of got hot in the spring and, and made a pretty deep playoff run. Um, we ended up fourth in the uh, D2 rankings uh, nationally. So. You know, it's been different this year in the sense that the competition is definitely more challenging. But, um, you know, we've still been playing very well. We've been playing our best baseball, and we've found our way to uh, 21st in the nation now. So we're hoping to continue that and keep climbing up the ranks. Now, you're in your senior year at Temple. Mm -hmm. You've gotten to Division One club ball. Mm -hmm. You've thrown a no-hitter and a perfect game. So what's the next step for you? Yeah, um, our playoff push is my biggest focus right now. Um, you know, we have a team full of absolute dogs and I have no doubt in my mind that, you know, we can go through, we can grind these games out and give any opponent that we have a challenge and a run for the money. So, um, you know, our, our biggest thing right now is just to focus on playoffs, continue to kind of keep that, that dog and team mentality and um, just make another playoff run this year. So last question here, LaSalle mm -hmm. announced that they're going to reinstate their varsity baseball program. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the importance of colleges reinstating those programs rather than cutting? Yeah, definitely. So um, obviously I'm biased towards baseball. Um, I think college baseball is such an important thing, though, because, um, you know, you have guys that are just big time student athletes. And I think that that baseball is such a thinking sport. So it is really important to kind of have that go between of, of school and baseball. Um, unfortunately, Temple did cut its team back in, I think, 2013 or 2014. So um, I think it's pretty cool to have baseball coming back to the Philly area. I know I had a few friends that I grew up with that were committed to LaSalle, actually. Um, and I think that was the year they cut their program. So that was kind of big news to me when that happened because that meant that my buddies had to, um, you know, go find somewhere else to play. Um, so I think it's, it's very cool that, you know, LaSalle and hopefully other schools are going to follow suit and restate their baseball teams. Yeah. Thank you again, Evan, for coming on the show. I mean, we wish you the best of luck in your remaining games and hopefully a long postseason run as well. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Natalie. I appreciate you guys Thank having you. me on. Thank of you course. so much. So it is now time for this crew's last break of the semester, but don't go anywhere. As we ride off into the sunset, we will talk about a very special club sport that not many know exists at Temple. See you in just 90 seconds. Welcome back to Al Sports Update. Temple has 29 active club sports on campus, but one is different from all of the others, and it's actually well off campus. Temple's equestrian team is one of the club sports that rides under the radar. We've done our best to create this like very welcoming environment for everybody, so I would say it's a really fun thing to do. The equestrian club has about 25 members, but the members can come and go as they please with each lesson costing $50 and no experience is needed to join. We love beginners. Almost half of our riders have never been on a horse. Temple competes against eight other clubs in the Mid-Atlantic region and it takes a lot of travel. 
Temple riders travel almost an hour to get to the Black Horse Stables in Norristown for practices and shows. Amanda Wright is the trainer and has more than 25 years of experience. She owns the two horses for Temple Riders, Frankie and Buddy. Temple Riders are on the horse for an hour, but that time is just part of the overall experience. Good, sitting taller. So we can groom and tack our horses and get them ready. Then we have an hour long lesson with Amanda in a group together. And then we have to usually spend an hour cooling them down, brushing them, getting them ready for the, for the night. Now this banana is a treat for Frankie, but his diet usually consists of grains and wheat and hay. But during these lessons, horses feed off their riders. The average horse weighs more than 1,000 pounds. So it's important for riders to be calm and be in command. Definitely relax, be patient. It's very unpredictable. You can't predict what the horse is going to be like and what they're going to do. So you just have to control yourself and your mind and like relax and just go with the flow. Since it's this crew's last show of the semester, it's only right to look back and appreciate all of their hard work. We've been so lucky to work with such a talented group this semester and are thankful for every one of them. All sports update. 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 It is live. It is live. It is live. It is live. And it starts right, right now. now. Thanks, Natalie. Even with this loss, it's important to remember that Temple is still tied for first place, as you mentioned. Many thought this wasn't possible at the beginning of the season in November. Much of this success is thanks to a five-game winning streak in February. Thanks, guys. The game of basketball has grown all throughout the world, and the international game has spread to North Broad. Players from all over the globe have committed to Temple and made a big impact. Katie Shallow leads her team and caused turnovers with 83. That puts her fourth on the all-time list. Welcome back to Owl Sports Update. Dante Russo came to Temple via the transfer portal. He might be the newest Owl, but he's made an impact by being one of the oldest members on the team and also along being a team leader. Temple's club baseball team last semester switched from NCBA Division II to Division I. The team has been hard at work practicing three days a week since January 29th. Thanks, Patty. It was an incredible run at the end of the season. The four wins in the first four days of the AAC tournament shocked just about everyone. For the past two years at regionals, Donna Bedian has scored an impressive 9.8 range score. This year, she'll look to improve those scores to a perfect 10. Thanks, guys. This past weekend, the Owls had two track meets to compete in. On Friday at the Raleigh Relays, Temple's Elsa Chan set a program record in the 10,000 meter race, placing 26th out of 60. In this edition of Who's on Our Radar, we are joined by women's soccer head coach Chris Shaw in his first season at Temple. Welcome, coach. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys having me today. Thank you to the entire white team for all of their hard work this semester. A very special shout out must go to our producers, Logan Matthews and Kylie Haberstrow, who have created amazing shows each week. And finally, Matt Fine, the man in charge. We are all so grateful that you provided us with endless opportunities. On behalf our, of our entire crew, one last time, I'm Patty Heckard, she's Natalie Caranda. Thank you for tuning in. See you next year and hashtag trust the fine.